And now back to Dog, the Bounty Hunter. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today I'm taking a look at the DC Multiverse Lobo and Space Hog to figure out if it's the last Zarnian you need for your display. And of course, lest we forget Dog. Starting off with the packaging, and I'm pretty sure that this is the front. It's the side that has a gold label after all. It's also the side with the name and logo. Nice enough product shot. The problem is that Lobo's Space Hog is 21 inches, or 53 centimeters if you're feeling European. We do get this really fun product shot on the top. It also shows off some of the accessories. Then again, this side also has the gold label. It also has some pretty fun artwork. I love this dog so much. And then on the back bottom side, whatever, we get some instructions. We also get legal and a barcode that won't do you any good because this is an Amazon exclusive. I've been trained since childhood to associate vehicles with closed boxes, so the lack of window is not a problem here. For packaging, I'm giving Lobo and the Space Hog, and most importantly this guy, one whole point. Moving on to presentation, Lobo stands at 8 inches and is near complete reuse. I never got the original figure, which I want to say came out in 2021. That said, I did watch a few old reviews just to get a sense of what's different. Below the neck and the sculpt is the same, but where is the original figure seemed a lot glossier, this one has a nicer matte finish. This helps us to appreciate all that fine detail in the skin. I'm particularly happy that they sculpted the details on the joints. Of course, there's lots of fun texture in the shirt and jacket. The bullet holes in particular are a nice touch. Flipping that around and his patch has been nicely painted. I like that it's a bit scuffy because that makes it feel more real. And even something as small as these painted stitches go a real long way to help the illusion. The belt buckle is great and I'm glad they painted all the studs. Would have been nice if they also painted the belt loops but it's not the end of the world. Of course, the coolest part of the costume has got to be the knee pads and boots. These shin guards are metallic but cast in a nice soft plastic, and the steel tip's a nice touch. Flipping it around though, and there's definitely a missed opportunity here. The back of the calves is definitely separate from the rest of the jeans, but they're cast in the same blue and don't have any extra paint detail. In general, you're probably not going to see it, but as this was something that McFarlane did the first time, it would have been nice if they went back in and updated it. This brings us to the only new part of the figure, the head. I hated the head on the original figure, and it was literally the reason I didn't buy it, so this is a very welcome upgrade. Unlike the original, the hair is a nice simple black, and doesn't have a bunch of blue painted on, and the face just better fits my image of the character. Not quite sure what's going on with that mustache, though. As for Dog, I'm saving him for playability. For presentation, I'm giving the main man one whole point. Moving on to posability, and I know that technically this is an older figure, but it's new to me. From the top, and Lobo can't look up. Fair amount down, though. No tilt, but at least side to side. Moving down, he can raise his arm over 90 degrees. There is a rotator cuff, but to be honest, I'm not getting a whole lot out of it. No trouble with bicep swivel though. He's got double elbow and I'm really impressed with how deep they've been considering how chunky the arms are. And at the end of the arm he has McFarlane wrist balls nicely hidden by the cuffs. Moving to the middle and the main man has a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist. He can arch back this far which is pretty good. And he can hunch forward this far which for a DC multiverse figure is pretty fragging impressive. Of course he can also tilt and twist. Below that skull shaped belt buckle and Lobo has McFarlane style hips. He can only kick this high which is okay but he does get a perfect split and honestly a really great amount of twist in the hip. Traveling down the leg and that double jointed knee has a much deeper bend than I was expecting. And then of course he's got toe articulation and McFarlane ankles that can swivel, hinge albeit not that much, and also not that much, pivot. Despite some minor limitations for posability, I'm giving Lobo one whole point. Moving on to playability and dog. Yeah, I know there's a lot more that comes with this set than that, but come on, dog. Just look at him. Such poise, such grace, a face every mother could love, the spiky collar, the hat that says Amelia Earhart meets the Kaiser. He's the muttly to Lobo's dick dastardly, and he is perfect. Only thing that would have made him better would have been literally any articulation whatsoever. But hey, He's got this sweet hole in his leg. That's so you can stick him on this spike. Arr! 
This brings us to the main event of the main man, the Space Hog. Front to back, and here we have a menacing face. Already you can see a nice wash in there. The neck is long and kind of reminds me of Legos, but something tells me I don't want to step on this in the dark. One thing you might notice is all the silver dry brushing throughout. Then we get to the engine block. Not sure exactly what he's in taking in space, but again, the details are great and there's a lot of nice paint detail in there. As we move down the body, we can appreciate more of that extra silver. It looks very authentically dinged and scratched. I can get lost looking at all the gears, but then we get back here and I feel like I'm looking at something straight out of the Phantom Menace. Are you an angel? No, not that part. Not to repeat myself, but look at the paint detail in all the nooks and crannies. The fans are impressive, and so are all the exhausts. Then you flip it around and see this. I swear this thing is like a combination of pod racing and Mad Max. Witness me, sir! One thing I find remarkable is just how incredibly light it is. It does have a really cool stand. We got the Lobo logo, and similar to Storm, a metal rod. By contrast, Storm from Aquaman is several times heavier. Oh, and don't forget about this guy, because we're going to talk about him again later. All together, and dog plugs in there pretty nicely, and Lobo has no trouble taking his seat. Now this is pod racing! Of course, that's not to say Lobo himself doesn't come with some accessories. First off, in this version, has the chain that the original came with. It's a nice soft plastic, and wraps around his forearm like so. Oh, and remember that sweet triple neck guitar from the display base? Well, Lobo can rock out with it. There's a lot of fun detail in this thing. For example, it has the main man scratched in. Just be warned, it doesn't really stand up to close scrutiny if you turn it around. Of course, one of the best accessories is this alternate head. Now, I'm not saying that mashing down on this spiky hair to swab the heads was painful, but an old lady with a cloak put a needle to my neck and told me if I gave up, I'd die. I must not fear fear is the mind killer i'm kidding i'm kidding i actually used an oven mitt that part's actually not a joke seriously this is painful all joking aside though this head sculpt is so much fun just loads of personality and the skin tones match up much better than the regular head when all said and done this is probably the one i'm going to be keeping on him if i could be greedy though i did wish he came with alternate fists of course playability is more than just vehicles and accessories it's also about how well your figure plays with others Starting with the rest of Superman's rogues gallery, and here we have Bizarro. Next up, and here we have Battlesuit Lex Luthor. Kind of overdue for a business suit one, if you ask me. Next up, we have Atomic Skull, General Zod, Injustice 2 Brainiac, and from Infinite Crisis, Superboy Prime. Let me guess, you're just gonna use me as a transition to Superboy and the rest of the Superman family. So yeah, that. You're pathetically predictable. Here's John Kent Superman, and then for Supergirl, here we have the DC Essentials one, the bad one, the movie one, and the one that wants to talk to your manager. At last, and this brings us to Superman himself. First up is the DC Direct John Byrne version, DC Essentials, the Superman vs. Aliens 2 pack from NECA, and then moving into DC Multiverse, here we have Action Comics 1000, Hush, my combination of the two using the Atomic Skull 2 pack, DC Rebirth, Dark Knight Returns, Dark Knight Returns with the Rebirth head, Page Punchers with his gigantic hands, Mullet Superman with his gigantic gigantic everything, and my mullet Superman kit bash combining the Ultraman 2-pack with the Doomsday 2-pack. That said, if you can't beat him, join him. For a relative scale comparison, here he is with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here's Lobo and Dog with Stealth Iron Man. Yeah, I know I'm short in metal, but I'm not a fire hydrant, so don't get any ideas. Oh great, not you too. Yeah, I don't like where this is heading. If it wasn't abundantly obvious, for playability, I'm giving Lobo and the Space Hog one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. As previously stated, Lobo and the Space Hog is an Amazon exclusive and retails for $70. It's more expensive than the Batmobile and Batman set, which was also an Amazon exclusive, but that whole thing was reused and came with no accessories at all. Additionally, Lobo is just plain more action figure for your money. The Space Hog is a new sculpt and has more paint detail. And let's be honest, a lot of us had already bought the Flash version of this Batmobile and were only buying it again because this one was accurate. If that was you, then you technically paid twice as much for this. On the other hand, if you had the original Lobo and 
and were happy with it, then you were stuck paying more for a figure you didn't really need. What about the Batmo Beast? That was a lot bigger and a lot less expensive. It's also mostly just a bunch of unpainted tubes with a flimsy plastic shell. But then you have something like Storm, which was only $30 and is so dense and heavy you could probably club somebody to death with it. Unlike Space Hog, this was a wide release to support a movie, so they made more of them and so therefore they could sell them more cheaply. I think we know at this point that I love it, but if the bounty for this bounty hunter is too high for you, well, I get it. With that in mind, for price, I'm giving Lobo and the Space Hog half a point for a near-perfect total of 4.5 out of 5. Is the set worth it to you? And would you like to see me review this Batmobile and Batman set, even though I'm pretty much the last YouTuber to get around to it? Tell me everything in the comments below. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.